right, and we're live. We're live. <laughs> hey, video or YouTube uh, subscribers, we're taking apart the new Xbox One controller. No, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, it has a sticker right here um, when it's brand new. It peeled right off, didn't come off in little pieces. It was pretty durable. Below it had one of the typical T85 uh, no, I think it's T7, screws. Right? Um, it, it seemed to be a little bit smaller. Um, as one of one of our screwdrivers didn't work, but this one fit just right. Um, yeah, the band aids from cutting on the the controller itself, so be careful with it. Anyway, so go ahead and remove the first uh, screw, although that part doesn't matter yet. Next up, we're gonna take off these two side panels right here. Uh, they're the actual quarter panels. It's it's separate from this back and the front piece, and did it by taking a little plastic tool here. Uh, putting it in through the side, sliding that down, got it about halfway in, and do the same thing with the second one on the other side. It pops off and it's just these little notches. Um, give you a couple different angles so you can actually see them. Um, they just pop right into these little grooves. You'll, you'll see it as we do the next one. But after you get that off, you've got the different, or the, uh, a couple more little T85 screws on the inside. So let's go ahead and take off this second one now. One more difficult than it seems. Yeah. All right, so we got it in one side. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the next side as well. I have no idea what tool he is using. It's just something he uses for PC stuff. All right, so slid that one down. You can hear it popping as each one comes loose from the actual. Uh, what they're in, but slide it down. It's not supposed to happen. <clears throat> Go to this side again. Stop. And then you just pull up on it a little bit. As you can hear, it, it, it sounds like it's breaking, but it's actually pretty strong plastic in there on the inside. So, uh, for you ragers out there, I think it'll be a little bit better. There you go. And you can see, uh, one of them looks like it bent a little bit. And straighten that back out. You can fix that with a little bit of super glue. Um, Not worried. But there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those total little clips. So I don't think one's going to damage the integrity too bad. We'll figure out the next part, and we'll let you all know. Welcome back, YouTube. All right, so we have the TD5 screws out in the back, and there was a total of four of them, in the top and bottom here and here on both sides. And that's why we took that that fifth one in the beginning. Um, as we see here, we've got the actual in, and this just popped right off once those screws came out. You got your vibrating, and as you can see up in here in the actual triggers, like they said, there is a uh, Vibrators, vibrations <laughs> in the uh, controls. That might not work with trigger stops. Uh, the, the purpose of this is we're trying to figure out if we can scuff this on our own. So uh, it will be an adventure, and if we figure out how to do that, we'll make another uh, video. Hi, or maybe not, and then you can come to me for uh, scuffing your controllers. Hi, All right, so let's see. Oh. If the front plane came right off. Well, that's nice. And the buttons don't fall out this time. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, if you've ever taken an Xbox 360 controller apart, as soon as you take off that front plane, each of these buttons would pop off, but these don't even seem to come off at all. Let's see. We'll explore a little more, and we'll fill you all more in with details. And welcome back. All right, so like we left off, these buttons do not come off. The D-pad does not come off. It, it may if we take this metal piece off, but I don't really want to mess with that right now. Um, as you can see, our joysticks are removable, so you can customize those, as a lot of you do. Um, a big thing among y'all is the heavy uh, vibrations in the actual handles. And instead of a, a plug-in, these are actually soldered, so to remove those, you're going to need a soldering iron. 
Uh, nothing too high tech, but uh, we're not going to get into to those right now. So those are going to stay in. Um, this entire thing is is one piece though. Uh, the actual board itself and the plastic seem to be connected by something. I'm imagining just little pins or something. Oh, there's a couple screws right here. Yeah, there's a total of four T85 screws that keep that motherboard connected to the plastic. All right, stay tuned. We will be back. And welcome back, YouTube. All right, so I was wrong. The inside of this board is not held in by T85s or T80s or T90s or the smallest ones that I have. And they got pretty small, but... We finally found one, and you can see these. the size difference. Here, I'll match them up. It's not a it's, it's not a it's not a lot of difference, but there's enough there. Got a good picture of that? No, uh, it's autofocus is off. Oh, there you go, right there. Yeah, you guys can see the difference. It's a little little blur, but you can see the difference. Just but yeah, there. there's there's the size difference. So, anyways. Uh, all these little tools that you're seeing, if you uh, search Amazon or YouTube for uh, phone, cell phone uh, repair kits, it comes with all this kind of stuff. And this is just one of the random ones that I had for uh, the iPhones. So, we're taking these apart. Um, there's two in the middle, two on the outside. There's actually three in the middle. And then there's one that's a little bit harder to reach down there in the middle, down there that you can see. And yes, that is my daughter you're hearing in the background. So we've got three of them off, got this last one, and we'll see how it pops out. I bet you the buttons pop out after we get this faceplate off. Yeah, I'm thinking that this is where we're going to find the actual connection for the buttons. That's what we're looking for, is so we can scuff it. Scrape it and scuff it. Right. Yep. You can, you can reach this one, and you do have to remove it. Alright, make sure you don't lose those little screws. It's very easy to do. Alright. And that front one pops right off. Right here. That's it. We will continue to update. <coughs> All right, so as I was thinking before, that middle one right there did not need to be removed until you lift this, at which point we've got another screw right there. Yep, right, right there. And then two more on this side. True, uh, in order to get, to, and you can't remove this completely without removing the rumble packs and these black and gray cords on both sides, which seem to go up to the infrareds and triggers. So we're going to go ahead and get these screws out and we will resume. Alright, so Microsoft definitely threw us for a loop on this one. It is none of these sizes and the one that I have been using for each of the screws so far on the inside of the board itself, as you can see it still fits those perfectly, does not fit this one and is too small. It's like, it's got to be a millimeter size difference. Either way, it's it's not fitting, so we're going to go try and find the right tool, the right size, and we will continue this video. By the way, this video was brought to you, well made possible by Monster, the true energy of technicians. Alright, so good news YouTube, uh, we found the right size for this, uh, this next screw. And it is a uh, T5. The kit that we're using. Oh man, I can auto focus this thing. For this next one is this uh, Duramax 18 piece. It has that T5 in it. Now, the kit doesn't have the T6, but looking and seeing how it fits, those little ones that I said I didn't know the size. <clears throat> seem to be a T6 because they're a little bit bigger than T5 but too small for this T7 like I said the kit doesn't have a T6 so I can't verify that <clears throat> but now we can go ahead and remove this last screw
We're going to keep that one separate because that one goes in a special spot. Keep track of your screws. Yeah, don't lose them like I said earlier. Alright, so now this front board. Well, stay tuned. Alright, so trying to get that front board out. Come up with having to take off the uh, the bumpers. Which, there's two pins, and you can see them right there. You see it? Mm-hmm. Basically, just put a little bit of pressure and popped it off. Once they both came off, it literally flung off of it. But that gave us a lot more room to work with. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take that second one off real quick, just to show you. Just comes right off that little pin. And then on this side... I'm trying to do this at angles that y'all can see. I hope it's uh, working okay. All right, there it goes. There's that second one. And they are labeled left and right, so it's pretty dummy proof. Well, to an extent. <laughs> a lot more difficult than the Xbox 360 controller. All right, so here's our top piece. It has a couple pins of its own. I'd be very careful with this because this has a uh, infrared. Infra infrared film on it. You don't want to rip those. And we'll be right back. Alright, so... You see this right here, the grain black, that's the same as they used to do with uh, the 360 controllers. And basically when you press it, it presses that black part in which closes the circuit against right there. And that round yellow, black, and then the lighter green around it is actually where uh, the B button presses into it and engages. Um, as you can see, these black and gray uh, wires, I just removed the tape right here to give it a little more room to, uh, to wiggle. But that's all for... Uh, oh, those, that black and gray goes to the actual vibrating up in the triggers themselves. This right here seems to be the contact for the triggers. But that's it for the Xbox One controller, YouTube. Uh, stay tuned, subscribe, and we'll be coming, coming out with a scuff-it-yourself video before too long. Thanks.